to Flatline. Thanks for joining us. Hello. Thank you very much for having us. So, do you want to just introduce yourself? Uh, yeah, so I'm Liam. I'm the vocalist. I'm Matt. I'm the guitarist, and I do some vocals as well. Cool. Now, there's not just two of you in the band, is there? No, there's five of us in the band. And uh, three of us a bit camera shy. <laughs> we figured we f- we figured it might be a bit cramped if we did all five of us. So we oh just wow, with okay, that's I like that. yeah, I like the way you think. So you actually, think you, actually, like, I tell a lie. Our bass on a stag do as well. So are you the be two it. better looking ones then? Yeah. No, our bassist is gorgeous, but he's on a stag do. <laughs> <laughs> he is a very handsome man. And our drummer's not in the country at the moment. So yeah. Oh wow. I don't know where Mike is though. We've got. <laughs> Mike's the other guy. No idea where he is. He just seems very <laughs> quiet. Hopefully, you should have just said yes. That was not. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> so, congratulations on making it to the takeover. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I mean, how did it feel? Absolutely mental. Um, we we applied last year, and um, like we had fingers crossed for last year's, and obviously it didn't didn't come to. And then we applied for the deal with Kerrang as well this year. And we got through at the final 10 and again it was like oh is it going to happen and again unfortunately that didn't happen so this is just it's just how it's massive absolutely massive i cried my eyes out when i found it <laughs> <Did> <laughs> you? Oh. yeah so like i just processed it really weird like I, I, I was at work and i got the text and i was sort of like oh great and then i went on a walk at lunchtime and i just remembered like playing guitar when i was 12 being like I'm going to play download one day. Then like I gave up on that when I was like 18 and I was just on this walk and I was like, 12 year old me would be so proud of me. <laughs> Crying. Oh, that's so nice. I mean, it does, it means so much, doesn't it? Cause as a, as a band, it's, it's the one place you want to get to, isn't it? Really? Oh, um, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. It's the final boss really, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> in it. What about you? What about you, Liam? Where were you when you found out? So I was actually on my lunch break um, and I work with my dad. So we went out to uh, Morrison's, got a meal deal from Morrison's, uh, Mexican chicken sandwich, uh, oh, nice. nomadic yogurt pot. And I think it was a Red Bull, but I can't remember. Um, but I, we'd got the message from Hev's as we were just driving to go and eat it. And I just like dropped my phone and started slamming his dashboard. Like, <laughs> we're playing download, we're playing download. Oh my God. I was going to kill Liam because when, when we got like, when we applied last year, Liam was keeping an eye on the view count of our videos oh, and so yeah. honestly he, he kept hyping us in the group chat he was like boys we're still getting views we're still getting views and i was like liam stop stop and then we never we never got it and like he was doing the same again this year and i was like liam i'm gonna mute the chat like <laughs> stop it i was getting really yeah up. i think you the final straw like you'd said that literally the morning that we'd got told <laughs> no, like, and then I, like at lunchtime i'd be like boys boys i told you and then just sent a screenshot of the message oh it's class <laughs> wow oh my god so um you've you've have you been to the takeover have you seen what you'll be doing yes yeah so we both went to download last year um we both got in relatively late because of the, obviously the mad traffic but we managed to catch some of the bands um and we already we've already seen october ends prior or I'd, I'd seen october ends prior um because they're from around our area and we know the bassist um and yeah, absolutely class, absolutely mental. And I've I've been going, well, both have been going to download for years and like catch snippets here and there. It's yeah, ridiculous that we'll be doing it this year. I mean, it's a huge stage, isn't it? Oh, it's absolutely enormous. If it's the same one as, as last year, which I assume it probably will be, absolutely mental. It's like probably as big as a third stage, really, at download. Easily, oh, yeah, easily. It's like six foot high in the air as well. It's oh, yeah. really ridiculous. <laughs> I mean, are you going to be brave and be do what some of them did and jump off into the crowd? Well, I've read, I've read some of the info pack we've got, and it says you're not allowed to do that. So I'm Pot not loose. gonna, I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> 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 Definitely not gonna do that. That would be naughty. <laughs> We're not about being naughty in flatline. <laughs> no, of course not. Uh, so um, you're from the northeast. Yes, shit all. <laughs> oh really? <laughs> You're not going to pick it up. <laughs> Do nah, we have strong nah. accents? People say we sound like Geordies quite often, and I'd, I'd, I can't understand Geordies, so I hope not. You've got a little twang. I wouldn't say it's overly strong. I thought that when I went to uni in in London, I was speaking to someone at a party, and they were like, "Sorry, mate, but I can't understand a word you're saying." And <laughs> I thought, I'm not even. I've not even a strong Teesside accent at all. 
You just made no. the listeners think you are the poshest man on the planet yeah, yeah. going to a uni in London. <laughs> 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 Can't be in a metal band with these university educated no. London no. students. <laughs> what did you study just out of interest? I studied audio engineering. Goat slaughter. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> Go slot. You should have said that. You would have brought it back, wouldn't yeah. he? <laughs> no, I did. I did audio production. Really, a man after I my did, own yeah. heart. I there, did. audio. <laughs> yes, it's, it's quite. It's quite, quite of, geek. It's a geeky subject. Yes, have you heard of SAE Institute? I'm going to say yes. I have. Okay, never mind. <laughs> but yeah, it was there that I went to. <laughs> cool. All right. Um, and I want to know about your music. Tell me about your influences. Oh, go on, you you can take this. Oh no! So I I have a really eclectic taste. Like I like everything. Like I like well, System of a Down. I like Kylie Minogue. I like Slot to Prevail. I like the Black Dahlia Murder. I like honestly, like I, d- I don't know when I just I write if it sounds good, I'm happy. These guys will tell me it sounds terrible or good, <laughs> and then we'll roll with it. Like I can take it. So um, yeah, yeah, I mean, I mean. As m- probably a load of people our age, um, we're late twenties, early thirties. Um, my gateway band was Linkin Park, and forever till I die, I'll be my favorite band. But um, I don't want to get too deep into it. But like when we released our last EP, the flat like it's just the self-titled EP. We called it the self-titled EP because all three of the songs are like totally different. I think anyway. So the first one we released, Break the Cycle, is like really like not punk at all but like a bit more raw a bit riffy a bouncy kind of sing-along chorus the one after has got weird eight bit sounds in it it's got weird like uh like super low vocals and then the one after it's like really techy and again like a big ethereal kind of open chorus um so you've got i don't know like while she sleeps and error and alpha wolf that i think there's the three main bands i'd say would relate to those songs wow for me anyway yeah um, I mean, it's amazing, isn't it? How all these different influences come together to make one sound, which is and like, all three of those bands are playing at Download this year, so buzzing, <laughs> absolutely buzzing. Hey, that's your prize, isn't it? You Fun know, you fact, yeah. Go. Yeah. it's actually Liam Stagdo at Download. Like we were going anywhere for his Stagdo, no and then this was like the icing on the cake. So. <laughs> it'd be class. It'd be class. So if you catch any of us on the Thursday walking around in a Disney princess costume. Yeah. You know why. You told us yeah. this, boy. <laughs> 12, 12 of us dressed as Disney princesses on the Thursday. So, yeah. I was so I was just thought in on just literally doing absolutely fuck all on a Thursday. But now I'm going to invite myself to your stag do. Disney princess search. <laughs> Who are you being, Belle? Is it Belle? I'm Belle from Beauty and the Beast, yeah. yeah. Oh, can I be the Beast? You, oh, you can Ooh. absolutely Ooh. be the Beast. <laughs> it's just scary, isn't it? <laughs> and then Matt is Tinkerbell in probably the sluttiest Tinkerbell outfit you've ever seen. Hot. <laughs> no one really wants to say that, but Download's getting it. So well, not, not no one. <laughs> T- Tinkerbell's not really a princess, but I wanted to be. Tink- works, I wanted works. to be Tinkerbell. So <laughs> why not? Who doesn't? Let's, let's yeah. be honest. <laughs> so, um, how did you guys get together? Uh, so I'd try to form some bands when I was in uni and it just never really came to and then I came back from uni maybe like 2017 ish um and was trying to find bands for a little while and then I'd got together with our old drummer and um current other guitarist um just on a whim just like oh do you want to do you want to get together and meet up and see if we've got any ideas I didn't know them prior to that but through a, a mate of a mate had known them I just kind of went from there and then I remembered oh uh, there was someone new in college who used to play bass which is our bassist luke so i messaged him and he was like yeah go for it um and then we finished the lineup towards uh the middle of 2019 i think then released our first song at like the end of 2019 and obviously covid hit like a couple months after so then we were just it was i think we'd released one song before covid then one song just as covid hit and then it just halted us for a while um but yeah then we've kind of a bit moved on moved on from then a bit we've had a couple changes at guitar a couple changes at drums but i think our lineup right now is pretty fucking solid L- liam completely pinned me down like to, to <laughs> like like really like um i was in another band and um it, it was just a night out and I'd, 
I don't even know how I know. I didn't really know Liam, but he was so drunk. So oh, drunk. <laughs> and he was like, listen, our guitarist is moving to Australia. And I was like, Liam, I'm, in, I'm a one guy kind of band. I'm not a band slot. And he was like, no, I'm just saying, I'm just saying. And he, uh, he was doing my head in. Like he was so much more drunk than me. And like, <laughs> he was very persistent. And then I went to get my first tattoo and I didn't know that the tattoo artist was actually... Liam's best mate and so I had to sit for this eight hour tattoo with the tattoo artist going join Flatline go on go on join it <laughs> and then stuff went south with my band like basically as they were closing off the auditions for the new guitarist so I just jumped in Liam's DMs and I was like please like go on give us a go let us like you've nagged me enough let me have a go and then now you're playing download mate so. I know <laughs> <laughs> a year and a half later wow oh my god I mean, it's. I want to ask. Is it, I, I need to get this question out because it's playing on my mind. Who is responsible for the lyric? <laughs> Hell is empty. All the yeah, all yeah. the cunts are living here. That is, it's just incredible. When we I, spoke when I about this that, in the thought, group chat wow. as soon as you mentioned it on the podcast. Oh yeah, yeah. it's our it's our basis. Yeah, he was well that happy that inspired. you picked that out. <laughs> <laughs> perfect. We Fucking love perfect. it. <laughs> I mean, do you all contribute bits and bobs? Do you all write? Do you all, you know? Uh, so we've only recently just got our drummer. So at the minute, I would say our drummer hasn't wrote anything because it was only with the past couple of weeks. But yeah, we all we all do bits and bobs. I'd say I write the most of it. Um, but yeah, I mean, like w when we're doing like the vocal parts and stuff, like half of the vocals, melodies and stuff will come from you. And yeah, we're, I'd say most of us are always contributing bits and bobs, but it's probably mostly myself. Yeah, when, when we were coming together to put that EP together it was we were thinking about it what was it mid 2023 and I joined the band officially in March so Liam was like I've written these three songs and he thought them through like they were they weren't like just bits and bobs or we can take this we can change with this it was like he pressed play and we were all like oh my god so like there was just I just did bits and bobs with the vocals like but the rest of us do write a fair bit we just that EP and the previous EP is primarily this boy. <laughs> you haven't been together that long, seemingly. I mean, how do you sound so polished? I mean, where does that come from? I went to uh, university in London to study audio engineering. <laughs> <laughs> is it just as simple as that? Are you the guy? Are you I, the guy? <laughs> I, I, I do the production for it. We actually send it off to a guy in France um, called Modern Nihilism Recordings um, yeah. to, to mix it. Not that I'd I feel like I'd do a decent job mixing it, but I, I'm i super, like, super anal, so I'd spend forever on it. Yeah, so I we, know the feeling. So we, so we send it to him to get mixed. Um, but I don't know, the the production side of it is mostly just pissing about and seeing what seeing what sticks. We're pretty, <laughs> like, we're all pretty techie-minded. Like, our other guitarist, Mike, actually works in a guitar star, so he, he knows about the gear that's coming out and what's best to use and i did music technology in college so like we're sort of clued up on stuff like that and then liam's work had an actual like a sound booth in it didn't like we recorded oh, yeah. all the vocals in a sound booth in liam's work which completely isn't anything to do with music at all oh yeah i work on like a i work on a port um doing like logistic stuff and for some reason when we built this new office they've put a music room on the top floor that's all soundproofed and audio like acoustically treated and no idea why but i utilize it quite a lot no one else in the company does but i do <laughs> god that's lucky isn't it <laughs> it's good isn't it well that, i mean somebody somebody had that in mind somebody was someone's got a plan for that place haven't they well, they, they got, like, some instruments and stuff and put them in there because I think the idea behind it is on, like, oil rigs, um, they have, like, a music studio for musicians that are on an oil rig to just go in and play stuff. And they wanted the same kind of mentality of, like, if if anyone... I don't know, because a lot of the people that work where I work are ex-oil rig people. Um, so they wanted the same kind of mentality. But like I said, no one else seems to really be using it but myself. Which is fine because I get used as much as I want. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, um, I want to say that your videos are, are really, although they're quite simple from what, I'm, what I've seen, they're really nice. I mean, you've got one. I like them. Yeah, I, yeah. I mean, you've, I mean, you, where did you feel you've got the one uh, where you all stood out in the in the greenery? Where was that? That's Red Car Beach, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> That's, honestly, it's we just used our friends like local 
I suppose videographers like for all all that stuff and then we just picked look it was it was very DIY so it it means a lot that you'd say that so <laughs> like oh yeah I'd be buzzing it'd be buzzing beautifully shot absolutely beautifully shot yeah. Um, it was actually, and what Mike told me the other day, he said that it's actually somewhere where the 1975 filmed the music video back when they first started. So one of their first music videos is filmed in the same spot. Right! <laughs> well, Liam's a massive guess. 1975 fan as well. Oh yeah, I like the 1975. All that well. bullshit about metal and Lincoln <laughs> Park and so he's, yeah. <laughs> the class. I mean, I'm, I'm really impressed. I mean, you've, you've, there's, I'm just appreciating all the effort that you've gone to to make Flatline. You know that video on the beach was a nightmare. By the way, there was like because it's red car. There was like chavs riding around on motorbikes. Like <laughs> honestly, you having to stop a take midway like, through because there's stroke. someone drifting a bloody drift yeah, yeah. Bike. He was like stop and like rev his engine and stuff. And we're like, oh, wait, like we're playing it. There's a drum, like a drummer in the middle of nowhere drumming, and all, all you've got is like a guy revving his engine. <laughs> oh god, <laughs> like dirt bikes racing around. So where where do you want to get to? And what's 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 what sort of. Um, I mean, who would you compare yourself to in terms of where you want to get to? Oh, that's a funny question. Because I, th- I think once upon a time, I would have just said like, oh, headline download. Like that would have been it. But I, th- I think even just playing download now, like uh, that doesn't mean I'm going to then play download and then disappear and think, oh, it's fine. But like that was the dream really, play download. And we're now playing download. So I'd like to think it's just up and up and up from there. Um if we can if we can play download and get ourselves on the main lineup as well that'll be yeah for, for me that's like like i don't like working in long-term goals because i just give up so like the next one is like either friday saturday or the sunday any slot like 12 like first thing where everyone's hung over everyone stands still squinting moody like <laughs> on the saturday i don't mind like just a slot on the Friday, Saturday, Sunday would be ideal. And like you said, it's probably better on the Wednesday anyway because everyone gets there and is just ready to go ham. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What one of the first bands that they will see at download? I mean, yeah, yeah. You've got a lot of eyes on you there, a lot of eager eyes. You I know. know. <laughs> so, other than the influences you've mentioned, who who are appearing on on the bill this year? Who else are you looking forward to see this year at download? This is a tough one. Because Easy one. I, I've got so many that I want to see, and I don't know if we're going to see them because it's Liam Stag do, and there's 12 other lads who's <laughs> just going to be dragging us to the bar every two minutes. You'll be right. You go see who you want. I really want to see Slot to Prevail. I really want to see the Black Dali Murder. I've already mentioned them. Like, I, I love the heavy stuff live. Like, you just get. I, I listen to quite like diverse music, like eclectic, but live I, I love the heavy stuff because the energy you get from it is just like overwhelming like yeah. you just you feel it a lot more so for me it's all the heavy stuff um i'm gonna say the total opposite i'm absolutely buzzing for busted wow <laughs> really absolutely Agreed. buzzing and yeah heavy stuff and busted i'll correct that one <laughs> i'm psyched for busted as well like i said my gateway was lincoln park but before then like what actually got me to listening to any music in the first place ever was busted and I remember the day when they broke up. It was like January 20, 2000, was it 2005 or was it? I can't remember. Did you cry? I probably, yeah. I would have only been like eight, nine years old. Yeah, so probably, I, yeah. I, I feel your pain. I did have their album. I had a present for everyone. It was it was I a banger, that, that album. That. Great. So yeah, probably busted. But then like I said, the other ones that influenced, like I really want to see Alpha Wolf, uh, While She Sleeps, Era, Shikari are a massive one for me. Um, yeah, I don't know who else. There is plenty more. Can't think off the top of my head. I know this is controversial because the amount of people have kicked off about Fall Out Boy headlining, <laughs> but my girlfriend bought us both tickets to see him in uh, Glasgow, was it early last year? And I wasn't expecting it, but they were phenomenal. Like, like they were really, really good. Like, they played all the old stuff, and I was I went through an emo phase. It, I know everyone says it wasn't a phase. I still love the songs, <laughs> but From Under the Cork Tree was such a good album, and they played loads of it. I was so happy. So I am looking forward to seeing Fall Out Boy as well, and If Avenged play the old stuff as well. Yeah, I, I, I think, yeah, Avenged for me as well, if, if they play the old stuff. I wasn't impressed with their new album at all. Um, but if they play a, a festival kind of greatest hit set, then I'll be in my element for that. Um, yeah, that'd be class. And I think, you know, Fall Out Boy, it's a solid old school set. There's not going to be anybody in that crowd who, who can't enjoy that. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. 
if you smashed as well, it'd be it'd be funny. It'd be class. Are you so you're regulars at download? Are you? Uh, yeah. So I've been. Oh God, I don't know how many times I've been. I, th- I started. I started going to festivals in like 2009. But do you remember Sonosphere Festival? Wow. Yeah. And I went. I went there first, um, and then I went downloading 11, 13, 14, 15, then the pilot, and then 22, 23. Now you've said you've said you've mentioned the pilot, so I have to pick you up on that. How did you find it? Absolutely loved yeah, it. It was, it was crazy, yeah. crazy good. I, as soon as it got announced, I was like, "There's not a chance I'm missing it," and no one else wanted to go. So I went. I went with my dad in the end, which he was buzzing to go as well. But uh, he's coming to stag do as well, so you might see him. Oh, in the wow. of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but yeah, it was unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable. It was special, but it? it felt special. Yes, yeah, yeah. Like not having any live music for the longest time, and then just getting thrown into a field. And it was what like ten thousand capacity yeah. or something, so it wasn't even anything huge. But like the whole setup of it was really cool as well. Like I was, I sit outside my tent watching the main stage. Like you'd be, at, you could be front row of the main stage within a one and a half minute walk. Yeah, I'd say. yeah, it's class. No, no masks. See, we all forget this now. No masks. No masks for anybody. Um, and there were no clashes that weekend either. No, no. For two tents. I just, I just go on about it because it was so fantastic. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, and some of the sets from there were just ridiculous. Like, While She Sleeps set was crazy. Yeah. And Shikari set was crazy. Yeah. Sleep Token were on up there as well. In fact, that yes, might be the yeah, first time yeah. I saw them. Um, yeah, some fantastic... Uh, performances cassiette was that was cassiette there can't remember oh i can't remember uh, i think she was actually yeah yeah, yeah. i think so yeah brilliant Steve, we've Steve had a few downloads since. Download. um so just want to say congratulations again because it is a huge achievement i mean out of hundreds of bands you've made it to that stage and you know it is it's gonna have you thought about what it's gonna do to your careers after because it, it does have an impact to be fair i've not thought about anything anything after that well i say anything after that i'm getting married like pretty soon after you've so got I've a lot on your mind thinking about, i've been thinking about that but yeah yeah <laughs> i think immediately immediately after our set it'll, it'll, it'll sink in a little bit more and then we'll be like right what, what do we do now because you'll be able to tell people that you're a download band i know oh you see oh. you stick that <laughs> on your posters <laughs> it's finding the balance between saying we're a download band and then being the guy that's like hey everyone we play download like and everyone hates you because you're that guy <laughs> that's i suppose that's true um, but but to be fair with in so sorry to keep this going but um our kind of scene in the northeast i would say has never been t- it, it was probably pretty good back in like maybe like 2012 or something and then it kind of it kind of teetered off but now as of last year and well, I say as of this year in fact you'd have, you'd have October Ends who played last year um, Rituals who won the deal last year uh, they're from Newcastle and now now obviously us so it'd be cool to see some more like Teesside bands playing it next year maybe on the takeover that's a question I want to ask actually is what's what's the scene like up in the North East it historically hasn't been great, but the past couple of years there's been loads of bands coming in left, right, and centre. Like I said, you've, I mean, October Ends and Rituals been going for a little while, but both those are fantastic. Um, hold on, let's name drop some more bands. Liminal, they're great. Liminal, are great. Um, Culturist, Monarchs. Yeah, yeah. Well, like negatives. Why have I not said negatives? Negatives of co- we absolutely love those boys, and they are amazing. Like they are. Like when I first saw them, I was like, "How are these a local band? How?" They're like they're unbelievable so so yeah it is it is getting it is getting really good nowadays but competitive or you're all friendly oh i'd say we're all friendly yeah, yeah. but at the we're same like best time very, negatives. very competitive because <laughs> we're like those bands that we've name dropped i wouldn't say they're a million miles from us genre wise like i'm very very happy for them oh we forgot motions motions are motions. fantastic as well but um we're all sort of metal car tech that sort of along those lines and like would probably sit comfortably on a lineup with them so like when i rock up at a gig you you don't want to be the band that people are like oh they were better than them i thought that like you you want to be the band that everyone's like oh my god they were amazing so yeah obviously we're going to play our best and we'd like to be the best but we're still happy for them it's it's sort of a weird one yeah i'm competitive but i love (laughs) them all (laughs) well you've got a 
you've got the takeover, you've got download, you know, there's a few things that puts you up there. So if you were being competitive, that's what you could say to them, you know. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, thanks ever so much for uh, taking some time out with Festpod. Um, we will see you backstage on the it's the dog house stage isn't it I always try to because I always yes. get confused is it dog tooth or dog, dog house? house dog tooth yeah dog house. it's the dog house <laughs> but we'll see you there anyway for a quick chat hopefully if you have uh, if you if you if you've not exploded uh, after performing <laughs> um, we'll have a quick chat with you then as well but thanks ever so much to you both thanks perfect for thank you so much for having well us done, guys thanks thank for you. taking the time for interviews cheers cheers thanks a lot. A Wilco Productions podcast.